Were you guys approached before the season started about playing this game on a Friday night, Black Friday weekend? Did you guys get any heads up on that, that it was coming? Uh, yeah. So, so the conference obviously is trying to create uh, some different days for games uh, to get more coverage for our conference. Uh, so they approach us about playing Friday night. Um, but there's a rule in the conference that you don't have to play night games unless everybody agrees to it. So this was part of the conditions in playing. James, you've shared that the game planning is collaborative, but day of, you haven't shared who's calling the plays actually? Can Correct. you do that? No. Yeah, no. Um, I, I just I don't think it's it's necessary or needed, um, in my opinion. Um, both of those guys are doing a great job. The whole staff is involved. Um, they're co-coordinators, so they're both sharing uh, that responsibility. And to get into the details of how it's actually happening on on game day, uh, I don't I don't feel like that is necessary, in my opinion. I mean, obviously, you guys have different opinions, but. Um, I think that's that's the right way to handle it as of right now. You guys have had two practices since we last talked. How is Drew? Do you still anticipate that we'll be able to play practice? Good. We we didn't throw them today while you guys were out there just so you guys could blow up Twitter and <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. yeah well, I, I know it is. Yeah, I know it is. But yeah, we just did that just just to mess with you guys. No, that that's not the case. But no, we're still we're still confident that he'll be ready to go set. You've established that you can hire an offensive coordinator that can get the kind of performances that you want out of your offense against most everybody on your schedule. When you're in a hiring process that's about two to four games a year, what are those bullet points that are maybe different than before? Yeah, good question. So, you know, I think it's really the, still the same factors, right? It's, it's uh, who's going to be great on third down. Uh, who's got the data to back up explosive uh, plays and explosive offense? Because in college football nowadays, to just be able to go four yards is, is hard to do a play all the way down the field. Um, opening drives. Uh, but a big one is, you know, data and information based on the people that have been able to score against their best competition. Know, the, the best competition in whatever leagues they, they've come from. Um, I think that's an important piece of this as well. Uh, obviously, we got even more competition coming into the league as well. Um, so those things factor into it. But I think your point is a good one. Overall, our numbers are pretty good. Um, but we got to make sure that we put ourselves in the best position based on the teams that we need to beat. Um, and to be able to do that and have the data to back it up and the evidence to back it up and the experience to back it up. Um, so that's that's really the that's really the biggest difference. Uh, and then hopefully, you know, someone that's done it long enough that you have a true indication because where you have to be careful is somebody could have a special quarterback or somebody could have a generational wide receiver and it skews all the stats. That's what makes it hard, right? Um, so that's where the more, the bigger sample size, the, the bigger body of work allows you to eliminate some of that risk uh, and feel more confident um, in the decision. And then also, you know, somebody that's, that's going to come and be able to use the personnel based on how it's already been built, if that makes sense. So the interesting thing um, I think the perception out there, whether it's a offensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, a special teams coordinator, position coach, or a head coach, there's less options out there than I think people think. Uh, when you really dig into it, uh, there's a small sample size. Uh, when I hired Manny, there's like three or four guys out there that have that track record, and there's probably eight schools that are trying to get them. So it's not as uh, obvious as, as people may think. Even, to be honest with you, even if you look at hiring a guy with NFL experience, that seems like that sounds good, um, but there's not a whole lot of evidence of that model working on the college level as well. So uh, it's a smaller pool 
than you would actually think, and there's probably not as many obvious candidates uh, as people think as well. And obviously, it's no different than recruiting. You're trying to get the five-star guy, but you're also trying to reduce risk as well. So all those things factor in. And um, on that note, that would also probably help if it's somebody that you have a relationship with already too, because you're not trying to figure that out. Are they a cultural fit too? So it's a smaller pool than I think probably people would think. James, Drew and Bo are are different styles of quarterbacks. You, you, you've kind of touched on that. When it comes to game planning, when would you practically need to know about availability to be able to do the game plan that you need to go? Or is that something that could go right up until pregame? Yeah, I, I think your point is a, a fair one. Um, that if we were game planning for Drew to be the, be the primary quarterback, it would be a little bit different if we were preparing for Bo to be the primary quarterback. We would emphasize different things. Uh, but that's why it's good that when you guys asked me before, I said that really, you know, our, our model and plan doesn't need to change based on the information that we have right now. James, going off that question, I know you said it's like having a like full-time job, but how is that process coming along in the search for an offensive coordinator? Do you feel like you've taken advantage of maybe the head start that you've had over some of the programs that will make that change later? Again, I think to your point, I don't know how much of a head start it is because my energy needs to be focused on beating Michigan State. So if I look tired during the season, um, late in the season, um, I may look a little bit more tired now because essentially from 6 a.m. when I say we have a staff meeting at 7 a.m., I usually get here at least an hour before the staff meeting. So from 6 a.m. till 10 o'clock at night is all on our opponent, Michigan State. So if I'm going to do any of those other things, it's going to happen before that or after that. Um, and there's only so many hours in the day. I got to come out here with the right energy for practice um, late in the season, um, helping the staff you know, with the game plan where I can help there, um, do all the other administrative duties that, that we're trying to, to do as well, whether it's NIL or facilities or, or those types of things. There's just only so many hours in the day recruiting. Um, so I guess to answer your question, it's not like we're getting that much of a head start um, because my focus is on Michigan State. James, uh, Kobe King's played a large But there's a little bit. He's had more on his plate, it seems like, in terms of, of workload on defense, sticking around for more third downs. He talked about that with us today, something he's proud of. What has he done to keep himself on the field more as the season has gone on? And how do you think he's really been able to seize this advantage of first-year starter? Yeah, I just think, you know, he's done a really good job in year one as a starter, getting better every single week, playing with more confidence, taking control of the defense, not only physically but verbally. Uh, being the quarterback of the defense, uh, playing a physical brand uh, of football, and and to your point, being able to take on a little bit more reps. So I think he's put himself in, in really good position to finish this year strong and then also be one of those guys that you know we're focusing on for next year and I think a lot of people will be focusing on uh, as an exciting, you know, an exciting prospect at the middle linebacker position in the Big Ten nationally and then uh, down the road as well. Marks, uh, in, in the past, we've seen a rotation uh, at safety with a couple guys that aren't here, but this year it looks like KJ and Jalen have really solidified themselves as, as the top two. What, what have they done to put themselves in that position? And how do they complement each other? Yeah, just, just like we've talked about in the past, consistency. Those two guys have, have been very consistent. Jalen Reed is extremely intelligent. That's his superpower. His football IQ uh, is, is really good, and he, and he plays that way. And I think you're going to continue to see him make more and more plays. Uh, but he's had a really nice year. Uh, KJ, um, I think, you know, has had a really good year as well. It's been very productive. Um, but those two guys, I think, just are playing – together really well and on a consistent basis. 
That's that's really what it comes down to. Uh, we got a lot of t confidence in Keaton Ellis as well. Um, we got a lot of confidence in Zachy. Uh, Zachy, you know, as you guys have seen flashes of, has a ton of potential. Has a ton of potential. Uh, and for him, it's just doing it on a little bit more of a consistent basis. Uh, but you know, we're fortunate to have those four guys in, in that room playing the way they're playing. We saw more of Amari Evans on Saturday, snap count wise with the offense than we can in all games. Do you feel are you happy with what he put on film Saturday and do you feel like maybe he's kind of trending in the right direction or turned the corner? Yeah, I, I think, you know, for, for us, you know, what we tried to do, you know, this past week which is something that we spent a lot of time talking about is let, let's focus on the things that guys can do rather than the things that they can't do. And let's put them in position, allow them to have success and then build on that and allow that success in some areas, build confidence in other areas. So that's where I think you saw more guys involved in the game plan um, and something that I was, I was pretty adamant about. Hey, okay, one of the things that these guys do well Let's put him in in position to, to to use those traits and use those skills, and we'll continue to do that. I think that's that's a really important piece, uh, being an offensive coordinator or being a position coach, fighting for your guy and saying, hey, these are these are the things I think they can do well and help the team and and have a role that we can build on.